Should you buy a home now in today's housing market or should you wait and see what next year has in store? This is the million dollar question leaving home buyers legs on either side of the fence. So be sure to stick around because I'm about to answer that exact question and more. Let's get to it. Home prices skyrocketed all throughout the pandemic and the feds are working to supposedly get the inflation under control by hiking the rates up 10 or so meetings in a row and mortgage rates are just soaring. With all this in mind, you would think the outcome of this equation would have any potential home buyer waiting on the sidelines. A recent survey done by the Fannie Mae Home Purchase Sentiment Index stated that 79% of consumers believe it is just a horrible time to purchase a home. That's understandable, especially if you were aware of what the housing market looked like over the pandemic, two to three percent interest rates and early on homes weren't escalating into ridiculous bidding wars, over ask offers and buyers buying other buyers out of their contracts. It was and is pure craziness. At a glance, it might not look like Michigan's housing market is budging in any way, shape, or form, but looking at some of the data collected by several real estate data sources, the median sale price increased in Michigan by 4.5% in April 2023, year over year, and the number of homes sold dropped by almost 30%. New buyers are jumping into this housing market with a mortgage rate in the 6 and 7% range. The problem is the media is just so gosh darn contradicting when it comes to reliable information, throwing out countless ratios and statistics and no one even knows where that data even comes from. They say buyers have the upper hand since the market is slower post pandemic and Michigan is supposedly going to see a decrease in home prices by 20%. But that came from the same source that said 2023 is going to be a buyer's market and if you have been paying attention to this market, it most definitely isn't or doesn't feel like it at least. I have been quite the observer in Michigan's housing market these past couple years being a realtor. It makes sense, of course. But what I have noticed is the market has been twisting and turning like a roller coaster where one month buyers are excelling and the next month sellers are capitalizing. The problem with these housing market headlines is they make the housing market extremely black and white. It's either good or it's bad, but the reality is it's 50 shades of gray. That actually makes sense. Mortgage rates are high, it's a bad market. Home prices are high, it's a bad market, and vice versa. But you and I both know that someone can capitalize in any housing market at any time, it just comes down to whether or not you can afford it. People ask me all the time, what do you tell people that are buying a home these days? And I start by putting my historian hat on and bring up the home price index year over year. The United States averaged a 4.59% growth from 1992 to 2023, reaching an all-time high of 19.2% in July of 2021, and even factoring in the negative 10.6% in November of 2008 when the economy fell off a cliff. Buying a home today comes down to answering two questions. Can you afford it with where the interest rates are now? And can you live in the home for seven to 10 years to ensure the home appreciates adequately? Of course, there's a few caveats here too. Is it your home you're planning on flipping short term or will this house turn into a rental at some point so you can put your landlord head on? So a couple caveats there. People get extremely hung up on the interest rates and home prices and it's understandable. It's good to be financially aware, but waiting for the perfect time to buy a home will be nearly impossible. I know we wish we could build a time machine and buy a home in late 2020 or early 2021 when the rates were low and the home prices weren't unbearable or even during 2008, but we can't. If you are tech savvy enough to do that, please just let me know. I, I'd go back and kick my 11 year old self in the butt for not investing in real estate. Inflation is never going away. 90 cent gas in the 1980s is not coming back. New $15,000 cars in the 1990s is not coming back. Everything will continue to get more expensive. The dollar will be worth less, but we can all cross our fingers and hope salaries and income can match up better to this crazy cost of living across the nation. All of our parents and grandparents give us a hard time about why the average age of home ownership is getting into the 30s, but everything was just a lot cheaper back then. But also back in the day, 1981 to be exact, Freddie Mac recorded the highest mortgage rate of 16.63%. And years and years later, when the rates came down to what they are now, those folks were ecstatic. We were blessed with what the pandemic did to our housing market in the interest rate department, but they aren't going to fall down to that two to 3% range for a long time, if at all. It was pretty much a fluke. 
five to seven percent will be the norm in my opinion for quite some time hoping they don't escalate much higher than that before i jump into that golden question i want to preface it with some real data from a true michigan resource since i'm a data guy i want to bring up this graph from the mls to show you the median sale price over the last three years as of right now we are sitting at two hundred forty thousand dollars, which was a 4.3 percent increase year over year but if you look at the section at the end this price was been exactly the same since february 2020 until present time, which has been the longest time of consistency over the last three years, which is actually pretty promising, especially when other resources are stating that home prices peaked in the spring of this year. The biggest problem with this unbalanced housing market is inventory. Some buyers have loosely accepted the fact that mortgage rates are what they are and they are making do with what it is. So the demand is still there, but the lack of inventory is what is driving the multiple offer bidding war situation. So if we can add more inventory, we can have less showings per home and alleviate some of that stress for home buyers. That's my opinion, of course, yours could be different. And taking a look at another chart that shows the homes for sale over the past three years, this graph shows a 4.1% increase in homes for sale year over year, which isn't a ton by any means, but it is a step in the right direction, even if it was just temporary. And as we can see, there was a peak in springtime of this year, and it's slowly starting to make its way back down, which is pretty typical in Michigan because seasonality plays a huge role in buyer behavior. And as we begin to slowly taper off the summer, we think about kids going back to school, and most people don't want to move during that time or when it starts getting cold unless they have to. Jumping to the next chart, this one is the closed sales over the last three years, and I thought this one would be an important one to include because I mentioned some buyers loosely accepting mortgage rates for what they are, but a lot haven't. And that's what we are seeing here since there was a 17.8% drop in closed sales year over year despite the slight uptick in housing inventory. The last graph I want to touch on to solidify all the other facts is the showings per listing. In June, July, and August 2021, it was crazy high, but now we see it has dropped 15.7% year over year, which means less people are viewing homes. I know of several people who jumped into the market in mid-late 2021 and are on the sidelines still, so the buyer demand is still off the charts, and I know a lot of people are just hoping for the mortgage rates or home prices to simply drop to affordable levels levels, but that opens the door to these thousands of buyers waiting for that parking spot to open so they can park. This chart had a slight uptick at the end and that proves that buyers are starting to accept the mortgage rates a little more since inventory is still at a low point historically. With all those questions, graphs, and statistics in mind, it brings us back to that million dollar question of whether you should buy a home now or wait. Several sources have provided three instances in which it would make more sense to wait, and this is location specific. Number one, are home values dropping in your area? As of right now, they are stabilizing in Michigan. Number two, if inventory in your area is increasing, more inventory gives buyers more bargaining power, so that helps in negotiations tremendously. So if this steady upward trend continues, more inventory equals more bargaining. And number three, if your personal finances could use some help. The biggest reason why anyone should wait to purchase a home is if your financial situation is not where you want it to be. For example, let's say you're self-employed like me and your job depends heavily on market behavior, which mine does. Not only would I be saving money for a down payment, closing costs, and emergency fund, I would want to store away six months in reserves that would be maybe excessive in your eyes, but I like that safety net because if the market were to hit a brick wall for whatever reason, I know that I can make something happen in six months. So that would be business expenses, mortgage payments, taxes, insurance, groceries, etc. Anything that I would need to live. That's just me. I'm sure three months may be adequate for you. On the other side of the fence though, there have been several of you who have reached out who either own a home in another state or are renting an apartment or condo looking for the right place to call home here in the Mitten State. For those of you who need to sell, I would recommend now is a great time to do so based on all the statistics I laid out for you earlier. But of course that depends heavily on your local market conditions and if you have found something over here or not, or if it would financially make sense for you to jump into a rental below your means here so you can save up a additional funds or simply wait for a home to pop up on the market you wouldn't mind living in. Jumping back to the home purchase sentiment index and for those of you that aren't familiar with this I know I brought it up in the past a few times. We know despite positive or negative indicators in a housing market decisions are based solely on behavior. This index polls a thousand plus people a month based on a hundred or so questions some of which are distilled into a single indicator which is 
designed to provide signals on future housing outcomes, and it's actually been fairly accurate since being established several years ago by Fannie Mae, which has provided reliable mortgage financing since 1938. The most recent report indicated there was a, a slight increase in the index that could be attributed to net increases in two components, buying conditions and change in household income. Home price outlook remained the same month over month, showing the majority of applicants said mortgage rates will continue to go up the next 12 months. In terms of home prices, they were asked if they would go up, go down, or remain the same. In June 2023, 37% of consumers said home prices would stay the same in the next month, and 36% of them said that they would go up. Based on that behavior and the graphs I showed you earlier, home prices are expected to stabilize or increase ever so slightly, whereas mortgage rates from numerous sources are said to increase. So if you're someone ready to pull the trigger on a home and are you're sitting on the sidelines, the consensus is home prices will be around or close to the same they are now, but mortgage rates will be higher. At the end of the day, these are projections, assumptions, and educated guesses at most. All anyone can do is follow the trends historically and make a theory about what economic factors will do to mortgage rates. For example, with election season coming up, there's this fear of what will happen to the mortgage rates, but taking a look at the election cycle from 1972 to 2020, New American Funding listed the starting rates and the ending rates along with the differential, and it was equally positive as it was negative from that 1972 to 2020 time, so it made almost no difference at all. Marry the house and date the rate is a saying I'm sure you've heard from countless realtors and mortgage lenders across the globe to describe this market with absolute absolutely zero context. And as much as I think it's the most unpleasant saying that's made its way into our industry, there is some truth to it. As I've mentioned time and time again, you want to purchase a home for long term, so you are marrying that bad boy. Rates fluctuate so much over the years that refinancing is almost inevitable. Before we started seeing those 2-3% to interest rates, most homeowners around the country had refinanced at least once, maybe twice. So if you're someone who is sitting back waiting for the mortgage rates to drop 1%, well, you continue to pay rent to pay off someone else's mortgage, I highly suggest you reevaluate your strategy. In a housing market that has been all over the place, the question, should I buy or should I wait, has been something I hear every day and twice on Sunday. I know the thought of buying a home is overwhelming. It takes a lot of patience and you're hearing it from someone who eats, sleeps, and breathes it every single day. Take some time to review your finances. Think about how much you need to pay for a down payment, closing costs, and an emergency fund you're comfortable with. Start the conversation with a realtor like myself and a mortgage professional to make sure you have your ducks in a row because at that point you can decide, you know what, I see what I'm approved for. I wanna spend more time saving to increase that with a higher interest rate in mind because at the end of the day, we plan for the worst and hope for the best. I truly hope this video helped you. If it did, share it with a friend, family member, or your dog if they're willing to watch. Please do me a favor and give it a big old thumbs up. Tap that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you are notified every time I come out with a new video. If you need help buying, selling, or investing in Michigan, don't hesitate to reach out. Until next time.